Now, this might not be the answer you necessarily want to hear in terms of what I consider my, my proudest thing that I've done in my career. But I'll be honest with you, it's being a teacher. It's, it's running the grants that I used to run. It's, it's, it's showing up at events and, and, and telling young people what I perceive they need to hear so that they can have the confidence to keep with it. I wish that uh, so many young people who have talent had confidence in their talent. Unfortunately, a lot don't because that talent comes from a place that sometimes uncomfortable. And to hear you're good is extraordinarily more painful for a lot of people to hear than you're, than, than, yeah, of course you did a good job. And, and I found that as a teacher, I can, I can get the students to sometimes hear that when, when they're told there's no right or wrong answer. It's, it's, it's what's right for you, and then we'll figure out how to sell it later. Get it done, get it on paper, and we'll worry about who's going to buy it next. Because so much of the purchase doesn't come from the actual content. It's how you position it. I, I can go into a room and pitch the exact same Boy Meets Girl story to someone who I'm looking around and say, oh, they have a poster for film noir. I'll, I'll pitch it almost like it's got a little bit of a noir component, even though it's a romantic comedy. Or I'll go into somebody who's a guy who looks like he had a very, very athletic career, and I'll pitch the story with a little bit more of a leaning edge on, on, on the male character, even though it's a female lead. Or I'll go into a room with someone who looks like they just got married, and, and, and I'll kind of talk to it in, 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 in that sense. There's always a part of your story that fits in with, with what the person who's buying it is looking for. And I'm not telling you to lie about your content. You're not at all. You're, 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 you know your material so well that, that, that you can go in there and get other people to see what you saw in it and, and, and why. Because if you connect with someone on that emotional level, it helps. And, and so many students are afraid of perfectionism. And, and if it's anything, I try to tell them, there's nothing perfect. Why do you think Cleopatra Jones is a huge cult favorite right now and probably has more people who would go to a revival of it than go to see French Connection, which won Best Picture that year? Or in 1967, I remember that there was this big thing that they did at LACMA where they, where they showed a bunch of 67 movies and, yeah, and The Heat of the Night did well and The Graduate did really well and Valley of the Dolls, they had to do an extra night because it was so sold out. You, you, you never know what's going to talk to others and, 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 and that's why I want my students to get that too. That, that, there's no wrong. You, 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 there, there's, and I hate to say it because there's no right either, but, but you, you, you write what you were born to write, and then we figure it out from there. Because if you write the way you were born to write, and you don't self-censor, and you don't make yourself crazy trying to conform to a rule book, you're going to come up with something that's better. That's, that's the bottom line, and that's why I love it. I, I, I look at my career, having been an executive for a multinational company, as being the training so I could hand to people who have the raw talent that I didn't have that opportunity to know how to make it happen. And if I could end up as a vice president in a major corporation, anyone can do it. And that's what they need to get, that, that whatever they think is blocking them now, that's just a chapter for the autobiography and nothing more. They can get past it.